everybody, everyone. The Knicks tonight defeat the Chicago Bulls 128 to 117 to take sole possession of the third seed uh, and, and distance ourselves one game from the Orlando Magic, staying one game behind the Milwaukee Bucks, behind Jalen Brunson's 45 piece nuggets. No sauce, no drink, <laughs> no nothing. <laughs> coach, what's good? What's good? What's good? Uh, oh, you know, before I coach, get into my, coach. my long soliloquies of how I felt about the game, um, we just going to go around the, 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 the table. Uh, as we normally do, we're going to start with the co-host, Kev. Kev, how you felt tonight, yeah. good brother? Um, well, well, to be honest with y'all, I missed the first half. I missed the first half. Your boy, your boy, uh, 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 got caught napping with, with little man. And I woke up like, right, right. I woke up like, right when DiVincenzo hit the half court shot. No cap. Soon as he hit it. But the second half, um, um, I thought that, uh, I don't know how we let the Bulls back in the game. You know, um, and and I, I just felt like the referees were calling a lot of, you know, being excessive with the calls at, at a certain certain time in the game. But other than that, um, I'm glad we got our win. Um, I'm glad we, we did our job and uh, uh, was able to stay a, a game behind the Bucks. Um, thank you. Uh, you know, I know we had our rough uh, uh, our problems with the Rockets, but thank you for you know, uh, uh, handing the Magic that L. So we appreciate that. That kind of made up for the little uh, 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 incident that we had early in the season. Um, so shout out to the Houston Rockets for doing that. Um, um, fuck the Boston Celtics because you were supposed to. You were supposed to. You were supposed to win that game tonight. So so yeah, fuck the Boston Celtics. And 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 um, I think that there's still a possibility of us uh, uh, getting them 50 wins. I think that I think that we can still pull it off. Um, what number we at right now? I don't even know. Uh, uh, we 47, baby. 47. Oh, yeah, yeah. 47. With three more games left. With three With more th games left. Yeah. yeah Yo, bro. Game. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I really think it's a possibility. And um, you know, I know I'm I'm I know I'm off topic, but I'm just a proud Nick fan right now, bro. I'm really proud. I'm I'm really proud, bro. We're not All supposed right. to be here right now for, for everything that we went through this year. You know, like a lot of people doubted us, they doubted our players, they doubted our coach, they doubted our front office, and yet again, we sitting here with forty seven wins, third seed. You want to get one away from second? You heard? Word, like, like we, we, yo, we out here, B. <laughs> Mrs. Yo. Mrs. Nix was good. Talk to me. I feel great today. I mean, like, like y'all said, we handle business. We're not leaving our our future in anyone else's hands. We doing what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Um. To handle our business and whatever happens and wherever we fall, we're good with it because we handled our business. Um, mm -hmm. But it was a great game. I mean, JB doing JB things as always. Um, but well, we had five players in double figures, um, passing the ball like like these this, this Knicks team is used to. I always say over twenty five assists, and we good. And today we had thirty one. 30. 31. 31. So, yeah. I mean, can't be more happier. Like Kev said, proud, proud Knicks fan. I mean, Absolutely. Every, everybody counted us out and we shutting everybody down with our, you know, no name players. <laughs> our one eight <laughs> point guard. Say it, sis. <laughs> say it, sis. Our one eight point guard. <laughs> Put some Yo. respect on our boy. Raz, before Word. I get to you, give me one second, good brother. Darlene, we see you in the building. Yes, right. everybody's here. It's a good night tonight. You already know. 
Cornell, we see you, good brother. Yes, indeed. Denez, we see you, good brother. You know what I mean? Maddie Smooth is in the building. JJ Jackson, Yo, we see Maddie. you, good brother. Yeah. So, so Fraz, talk to me, good brother. What, what's happening? How you feeling tonight? Well, first and foremost, what is really good, everybody? You already know the vibe. It is your boy, Fraz Pass in the building with the gang. Shout out to my next big family. You see them on the screen. Shout out everybody in the building. Yeah, I know I got to keep you out of introduction properly before I get it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But all in all, this next team has done wonderful things. Just raise your voice a little bit, Fraz. I don't know what's going on with your audio, but just raise your voice a little bit. I mean, literally, this, this next team has surpassed last year's win total. We still aiming at the win total that this game gave y'all at the beginning of the season. And I believe this win earlier tonight comes to playoff for us, if I'm not mistaken. That was the first place to win, no? Half a win, half a win. If Miami would have lost tonight, if Miami yeah, would have lost tonight, that would have clinched. Yeah, half a win. Man. One more W, we, we, no matter what Miami do, we good. One more win. All right. All right. All right, Nick. One more win or, or a loss of Miami, and we're in. It. Okay, but no matter where we fall, I'm not worried about it. But I want to say this. The emergence of Isaiah Hartenstein on the offensive. All right. <laughs> offensive. Not the defense again, the offense. When you're getting double doubles with offense and put in there, now you're getting something that we really need as a team going forward with the absence of Julius Sanders. Now you have your big man scoring points, which is now going to make teams mm. have to defend. You can't just play drop coverage no more. The drop coverage don't work, but we'll get into that. A little later on, I'm I'm a little long. Uh, well, you know, I, I I can't help myself. I'm going to be long windy. The cognac is in effect at night, so it is what it is. <laughs> shout out to Frank Frank Fingers in the building, hey yo! But shout out to you, good brother. Right, uh, baby. Oh, uh, so 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 to to the first. You know, piggyback off of what Paul's, what Fraz was saying about Hartenstein's addition to offense is it's not so much drop coverage because drop coverage will work against Hartenstein. You, it makes it harder to blitz Jason, uh, uh, Jalen Brunson, right? Because now the middle of the court is going to be open, right? Because when they run the, the high screen and roll with Jalen Brunson and Hartenstein, they usually try to blitz Jalen Brunson off that action. Now that leaves Hartenstein open, free throw line extended, and he has mo a multitude of options in that action. Right? He get. We all know about his passing virtues, but now the fact that he got this automatic floater, actually, absolutely. As I said, it, it popped up on the screen. Okay. Now that he has this automatic floater. It, 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 it puts the, the, the defense in a conundrum. Like, do we blitz Jalen Brunson and, and just hope that Hartenstein is going to miss a 15-foot floater and, and shoot them out the game with a 15-foot floater, which is very dangerous. Like, losing to Hartenstein giving you 30 is kind of crazy, right? So nobody wants to lose. <laughs> the heart inside scoring 30 points on floaters, right? So it puts him <laughs> in, in a conundrum, and then you also could pass. And you know, uh, I think uh in a post game, I'm not sure if it was Wally or Allen said it that we are becoming uh a very dangerous three-point shooting team. We have a multitude of guys that shooting 40 percent from the three-point range who's shooting a high volume of three-point shots. Uh, quietly, we're becoming one of the best three-point shoot, shooting teams in the league. Uh, and OG is starting to round back in the form, and we all know what he does from the corner. And that's dangerous business, man. It's dangerous business. 
And, you know, I, I kind of got sidetracked from what I originally wanted to, to say when I started my soliloquy. But but to, to, just to piggyback off what Fraz was saying, because Fraz, I don't know what's going on with the audio, but I know Fred, uh, JJ said he was having a hard time hearing you. So next time you speak, please just, if you could just raise your voice a little bit, good brother. You know what I mean? Uh, but tonight, tonight, Jalen Brunson once again proved that he's a top 10 player in this NBA that we, we hold tonight. 10 40-point games in a season. You know what I mean? That's, 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 that's crazy for somebody that guys thought we overpaid. Uh, in, in the words of uh, 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 Stephen A. Smith, who don't even know who's on the team or not on the team, we're gonna get into that. I got a rant about that, so I'm not even gonna. I gotta, I gotta push the button on that. You already know I gotta push the button on that. But said that uh, we went to his basketball game sitting in the stand like he's a college student. Like now you see why why the front office would sit in front row with the star of the team at the time, Julius Randle, making sure they knew that Jalen Brunson knew that he was wanted and desired to come to Word. New York because they Word. saw the future. I didn't see Jalen Brunson being this guy, but they did. They absolutely did. And Jalen Brunson is proving everybody wrong time after time, and tonight was no different. Uh, they tried to take away the paint from Jalen Brunson tonight. They tried to take away the paint, and guess what happened? They forgot that he's an efficient three-point shooter. <laughs> yep. So, and that's the thing that's beautiful about Jalen Brunson. Not only does he have the talent, he has the IQ to back up the talent. He knows how to read the defense, read what the defense is giving to him, and exploit that. And tonight he did the same thing because it was a point in the game where I was a little bit frustrated. Where I was like, Yo, I want you to go to the basket, bro. Because, you know, the, 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 the Bulls was keeping the game kind of close, closer than I would have liked. So I was getting a little bit for Go to the basket. Then I watched what he was doing, making a correct pass every time, taking a correct shot every time. And before I looked up, I'm like, oh, shit, Jalen Brunson got 30 points. It's still, it's still the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Word. Uh, Word. So, on Jalen Brunson, and he's playing a high level of basketball. When I'm talking about high level, I'm not just talking about skill. Yeah, you know I mean, or, or athleticism, because the dumbest basketball players can have that. Like, we remember, what was the guy named Gerald Green? Was He's one of the most athletic people I've ever seen on the bat at the basketball court. Jump out the gym, athleticism. He had all the tools to be great, but he was a <laughs> dumb basketball player. You feel me? And Jalen <laughs> Brunson may not have those athletic tools, but he's – who said it? Michael in the building, I see you. That boy is a genius. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a nice. fact. You feel me? And, and I know I'm being long-winded, but I like to go down the list of, of players. We talked about Hartenstein. We talked about Jalen Brunson. We got to talk about Deuce. I've seen Deuce make moves that I've been asking him to make today. I, I, <laughs> Mrs. Nix was here. Last well, last live, what we was talking about. I said, Deuce yeah, got to be. Every time I see him go in the paint, I'm like, that's for you, t <laughs> no, I, this is What I've been asking for, break down defense. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need you to do it all the time, but sometimes I need you to be aggressive and break down some defense and get in the paint because we know you can finish. We know you can finish. We know you can pass the rock. We know you got a solid mid midi. Like, you have, we, we need you to get into all your two bags, especially going into the playoffs and to see him finding the confidence to, like, you to, to be effective, you don't need to be, you know, woo, 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 doing all this fancy doo doo behind the back super spin moves. Jalen Brunson don't got the most, you know, uh, flashy Black. handle. Yeah. Handle, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. He don't have the most flashy handle, but is effective. He and I feel like you. he will drop you. Absolutely, yo, it's but effective. 
but you can yeah, see yeah. you 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 my bad friends I, I i'll be quick um you can see that whatever Jalen brunson got going on it, it's kind of like it's kind of like 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 rubbing off pause on 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 dudes especially Mrs. his three especially the shooting Mrs. the shooting is the last couple last couple lives mrs nix was saying that she's like that that man has been watching Jalen brunson yes and, yes and i need him to continue doing that fresh you had something to add um i mean the, the keys to Jalen brunson are simple he always keeps himself in motion and he keeps his dribble a lot those are the mm -hmm. keys to any great point guard remember it's all about the fundamentals right? And those are the keys to why Brunson is always, always. And yes, darling, you are absolutely right. His footwork adds in to what we're talking about with his handles and how he maneuvers on the court. But um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So this McBride, his shooting, it was a little bit off the night, but the fact that he's aggressive, taking his shot is all I need because, you know, like Coach Chalmers, he said he shoots a high clip in 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 the um in practice. So it's only a matter of time to translate it to the games. Even the best shooters have off games. I just need him to keep on shooting and being confident in himself, and and everything's gonna work out. Dante DiVincenzo is who he is. Dante was a little bit weird tonight. He made some weird plays on both ends of the court tonight, and I just couldn't figure it out. But, you know, he's allowed <laughs> some bad games. You know what I mean? He's allowed some bad games. His decision-making tonight was a little bit weird. A little bit weird, but we're not going to cry over spilled milk because we got the W. And I know Dante is going to bounce back because he's a consummate professional and like just like JB and Josh Hart, they have that mentality that, oh next, this is oh, oh next, next time, I'm just gonna go out and wild out. <laughs> Josh Hart got ejected from the game the, the time before, and he came in tonight wild out. He had 17 what and what? 17, I know, 13, 13 and seven. And seven yep. <laughs> yo, let me say yo, please, man. Like, okay, okay, like, okay, talk your shit. You know that what's that sixty two and forty since we traded for Josh Hart, impacting winning. Spot on. Spot like, on. how can anybody be mad at what at, at what this man has done for the New York Knicks, bro? You know how can anybody be mad at that? Like now, now you see he's knocking down that little mid range shot. You know what I mean? That little mid range shot is falling. And and I have a feeling I have a feeling that you know come playoff time, I think the three point shot is gonna start dropping, bro. That's just me. I could be wrong, but I think no, I think so. Who are, you, who are you talking about? My bad. I was distracted for like two seconds. I'm talking about Josh Hart. We oh, talking. We talking about Josh start, Hart, right? It's already starting to fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, um, everything he does for us, like you see. When we lost him, what 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 a difference made with him on the court this game from when we lost him in that last game. And that last game when we lost him, we lost his energy. And that mm -hmm. that kind of that kind of threw us off. And but if you see in this, yeah, and rebounded. We was we wasn't getting those those loose balls we usually, you know, we usually get when he's on the court. He's like a magnet to those, you know. So, so my man is like Magneto when it comes to the loose balls. Pause. Word. He don't play no games, bro. My my guy's six four, going over all these tall dudes that's like four or five inches taller than him, bro. Like, put put some respect on my man Josh Hart, bro. Enough is enough, man. Like my man is like one of the best rebounding guards in the league, and and he don't get the proper respect, bro. Not only oh. that, but he could. Yo, and another thing is, I'm sick okay. and tired. Two seconds, two seconds, hold two up, seconds. hold up. Go ahead, go ahead. Not one of the best. Not one of the best. The, the best. best. The best. Right. The best. Okay, correction. You're right. The <laughs> best. 
Keith, the best, right? I'm tired of people saying that he can't create for himself when constantly we see him going coast to coast to coast to coast, taking it to three, four people in, at a time. Like, bro, y'all got to stop it, bro. Y'all got to stop it. We got to appreciate what this man brings to the table for us. And, um, and, and, and you know, again, shout out to Neon Rose. Thank you very much. I'll pass the mic off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hold so on. Before, before we get yeah, to the yeah, next yeah. player, everybody press that like button. Facts. Facts. Sharing is caring. Facts. And tea time Facts. Words. We got like 40 people, 41 now. <laughs> yeah, talk that shit. This is this. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sharing is caring. That's a fact. But yeah, I think Jazz Hart, to me, you know, when we talk about X factors going into the playoffs, to no. me, he's, he's our X factor. Uh, activity and aggression on the boards. And getting those mm-hmm. extra plays and extra possessions is gonna mean the world to us. Uh, and the fact, yo, I, I, this, this is something I'm gonna talk about after, you know, we no, get Mike. through the rest of the. Well, I think I'm kind. Of, oh no, I didn't talk about OG yet. But, OG, oh, um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, when we get through the rest of the players, we gonna, uh, we gonna do OG seventeen and three with OG. Seventeen and three. Listen, in his first quarter, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> This is the OG that we need. Bro, I said, and, we and, winning. And, 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 and people be like, yo, we don't have, you know, no other players that can create for themselves. Uh, 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 uh. This is true. You know what I mean? But at the same time, at the same time, right? If you watch the way we're playing basketball, we don't need it. Because the ball is moving, bodies are moving, guys are cutting, and we're getting into the paint, we're kicking out. And I just think sometimes we're just a little bit too unselfish. And guys are right at the basket, and they're thinking that, oh, I need to kick it out for a three when they need to just really lay the ball up. But the thought process is where it needs to be. And OG may not be one of those guys that could dribble you to death and get to the hoop, but let him catch a lane going to the basket, coming off that little curl action. They like to run him off of the double screen. He can finish at the rim with the best of them. He has tremendous, not only layup package, pause, he can dunk it on you too. Like with both hands, he could go, he could lay it up with the left. He could lay it up with the right. He could dunk with the left. He could dunk with the right. It don't matter how you like it. He could serve it up, Paul, right? Um, and, 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 and when I'm watching this team, I'm like, this is what makes us dangerous. Is because though none of our guys could dribble you out your shoes aside of Jalen Brunson, the way they move without the ball makes everybody a dangerous option offensively. You know what I mean? Like, OG's not just standing there in the corner waiting for corner threes. He's cutting to the rack, making himself visible to whoever has the ball, and especially in trap situations where guys are being trapped, he's cutting from the right angle where he could make himself be seen and guys could get, like, Hartenstein and Brunson could get him the ball, right? And and, and that's important, especially missing a, a person like Julius Randle. We're going to need somebody... We're going to need OG to average at least 15 in a postseason. Mm. At least 15. Com- a combination of his cutting and his three-point shooting ability, that's more than easy enough for him. Facts. More than easy enough. You know what I mean? And, 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 uh, and Fraz, you look like you're ready to say something. I mean, let, 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 let's just call a spade a spade here, right? Say it with me, everybody. Intangible. All Facts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of our guys have them, all right? A lot of them. Josh Hart, complete skill set. Isaiah Hart is signed, somewhat of a complete skill set. Not all the way there, but some. And y- y'all know what I think. Who else we got? Um, OG, well, he's practically there, all right? It's just he's just in this. He's just doing it. 
Um, now, you're looking at a point where, all right, double high screen is going to have to be used a lot more going forward with the way teams have been attacking Brunson, especially with a 1-3-1 one, one zone and that 2-3 zone. Because I saw in the OKC game with the 1-3-1 one, one zone, they kept the guy at the top flanking, flanking the ball. That's what the 1-3-1 one, one, guy at the top is flanking the ball. He's moving around the front, and there's a double team that follows him around. Louder. And if you know how to bust through a 1-3-1 one, one zone, it's simply this. You need to get to the basket. You need to create motion to the basket. Because shooting threes is what the other team wants you to do. So I think that double high screen that the Knicks run, they're going to have to run that more often in order for us to, to get forward in these playoffs. I have a feeling. So, yeah. Uh oh, yo, you know what's crazy? I didn't even know this pressure's didn't play today. Yo, I was gonna talk about that. So Kev, go ahead because I didn't even notice. I don't know what's the story, what happened, why he didn't play. No, nah, I, I didn't I didn't hear anything about it, but I don't I I um I was kind of conf- thrown off by it because I don't like that, you know, Josh Hart played 46 minutes, man. That's, that's a lot of minutes. You know, that's a lot of minutes for Josh, bro. That could have been cut down and given, given some of those minutes to Precious, take some take some of the pressure off the guys, you know, because we're going to need our guys fresh for the playoffs, you know what I'm saying? Kev, I hear you, right? And I, I understand where you're coming from, but I disagree wholeheartedly. Precious has been playing like shit the last seven or eight games. He wasn't the same guy that we we was uh, I was apologizing for. He put he started playing like the guy that I was like, why the fuck are we playing this guy? That's the he been playing like him again. You know what I mean? And 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 I apologize for Precious most times. Like yo, damn, my bad. I I didn't know you was like that, but he ain't been playing like that. He's been playing soft. Like unenthused, ever since he got taken out the starting lineup again, he's been playing like he felt like he should. I should have stayed in the starting lineup type vibes. And nah, nigga, you shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't have stayed in the starting lineup. Appreciate the time that you got, and understand that you was always meant to be a role player, and you you're going to be that. So when you in the game. You need to maximize your minutes, go 110%. But the, the effort that he's been given over the last few games, I wasn't happy with. I wasn't happy with at all. I was mad at when we was playing Chicago the last time. I was at home like, why is he still in the game? And I was yelling at the, 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 at the TV. That's what I was yelling at the TV. You know what I mean? And again, I'm I, I'm mad enough to admit when I'm wrong, but I'm also petty enough to be like, shit, I knew it all the time. And he's giving me he's giving me I knew it all the time vibes. No, and I think there was no specific reason he didn't play. But if you look at the minutes they're giving Mitchell Robinson, they trying to get his feet right and his, his cardio right for playoffs. And I mean, if that cause fresh is not playing at the end of the day, that's what needs to be done because Mitchell's gonna be vital to, to our playoff. Right? Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, this is a fact. This I is agree a fact. with that. This is a fact. And you know, I don't want to overstate our win tonight. It is Chicago. Chicago is kind of ass, but they're still fighting for something. Yeah, you know I mean, mm-hmm. so I think we should have won by twenty something, honestly. But I'll take the W. Uh, yeah. But I, I'm also like, we got we got what three more games left. One of I them think, against Chicago again. What happened, Kev? You think what? I think we got four more games, right? Three, three. This today oh, was three. Our, the, today was four. We got three. Oh, we got okay. Boston, Brooklyn, uh, Chicago. Chicago. Oh, gotcha, uh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, getting this one was pivotal. I'm happy we got it. Uh, 
just talking about Boston, because I think this is going to – I believe this is going to be the Eastern Conference Finals if we stay in the third seed. Oh, no, we're going to stay in the third seed. We're going to stay in the third seed. This is going to be the Eastern Conference Finals, right? Um, and speaking of Mitch, this is why I'm talking about this, because, you know, Mrs. Nix was talking about Mitch. Mitch, I do not want to see him see him guard any stretch fives ever. Word, word. I need, <laughs> so, it, it, with saying that, I need uh, Isaiah Hartenstein's minutes to be matched with Przingis if we play the 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 uh, the, the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. Przingis go to the bench. Hartenstein need to go to the bench. Przingis come back on the court. Hartenstein need to come back on the court, and that's purely because. Mitchell Robinson don't have the mobility to get out and contest threes and protect the paint at the same time, the same way Hartenstein does. Hartenstein has quicker footwork, and it's just that simple, right? Uh, but I, to me, again, I said it last time. To me, this is the only team I really fear, you know what I mean, in the Eastern Conference. 76 is making an impressive case. Got my eyebrows raised. You feel me? But we <laughs> packed them up with 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 uh with uh uh Joel and B before. You know what I mean? But they got my eyebrows raised. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. But um, yeah. That's one thing I'm looking out for in the upcoming future is how we gonna defend Boston because they scared me a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, Derek White is the guy that, that I always wonder, like, well, how are we going to stop him? Because for some reason, he's always that guy that kills us every time we play him, man. I think the last two times we played him, he had, like, 30. He dropped 30 on us. Got to watch out for Peyton Pritchard, too. He'll yeah. Be for yeah. <laughs> since, since, since preseason, we've been kicking Peyton Pritchard's ass. Preseason, Peyton Pritchard fucked us up every time he played him in preseason. But since the season started, Peyton Pritchard ain't been much of a problem. Przingis been fucking yeah. us up. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bad. That top of the key three-pointer, killing her. Pick and roll between Drew Holiday or Jason Tatum, Brown, Whoever he runs the pick with and, and, and fades to that top of the key, that's what literally been killing us. And I just think that Mitchell Robinson is not comfortable enough not to play drop coverage. The scheme when Mitchell Robinson on the court is for Mitchell Robinson to play drop coverage. And, and that against Przingis is bad business. And that man is going to shoot us out the motherfucking gym. Every time we play him in drop coverage. <laughs> Every time we play him in drop coverage. And I agree with Kev. Uh, uh, Derek White. Something got to happen. Got to stay attached to that man. For whatever reason. And it's because of defensive scheme. You know. We like the, we like the shade to the paint. We like to have most of our guys having two. Like one. At least one foot into the paint. Even on the weak side. And help defense. And. Derek Wright is good at shooting over people. You know what I mean? And even though we may contest okay, he's comfortable enough. Fraz, you better wake up, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you better wake up on my live, man. <laughs> Fraz over there going night night. Yeah, I know it's late. I know it's late, good brother. <laughs> but yo, check it. But yeah, he's comfortable shooting over people. You know what I mean? And that's where we get caught because we like to put the defensive scheme is to have our guys that have at least one foot into the paint when even on the weak side and help defense. We like to push everybody to the middle of the, the court so they pick up their dribble and, and, and have to pass it out and recover. Uh but with Derek right that don't seem Derek White that don't seem to work. Because he's, right. he's shooting over everybody. <laughs> he's shooting over everybody. But this is what's different between us 
when Boston was kicking our ass earlier in the season and now. Boston was kicking our ass because Jason Tatum was being guarded by Quentin Grimes. As much as I love Quentin Grimes <laughs> as a defender, <laughs> as, much, as, much, as, much, as much as I would love him as a defender, and there's no knock <laughs> on him, we know Quentin Grimes what? is a good defender. He's just too small to guard Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum is a solid 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, Quentin Grimes is 6'4". Yeah, that's... And Jason Tatum is not no scrawny 6'8". He, he got muscle. He overpowers him. He shoots over him. Yeah. What's the difference now? OG and Anobi. 6'8". Long arms. <laughs> <laughs> not a scrawny guy. You got muscles. Right. You're not going to be able to overpower him. You're not going to be able to, o- to, to, to overshoot him. And he's an all-NBA type defender. And I'm not sold on Jalen Brown being the one to kick our ass. <laughs> I'm not sold on that. I'm not sold on that. Knowing that we got somebody to guard Jason Tatum, and we could put Josh Hart on, on, on Jalen Brown. I'm super comfortable with that. The only matchups I'm worried about against Boston is Brazingas and Derek White. Mark. And if we stop one of the motherfuckers, we're going to win. <laughs> and, 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 and to land the plane, because I'm being long winded, super long winded. Um, <laughs> Everybody talk about, oh, they got Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday is a great defender. This is true. But Jalen Brunson gives Drew Holiday work. <laughs> you know. We should say Drew Holiday and the rest of the league work. <laughs> Yo, listen, listen. It's nobody like us. Nobody has been able to stop him. Nobody. Yo, he got, he got his own. It's like I said in the chat. He got his own special island. He got his own special island of all kind of point guards and all kind of centers and all kind of point guard, like all kind of players. It doesn't matter who it is, small, short, like small, anybody smaller than him, taller than him, like it doesn't matter. Double teams, triple teams, it doesn't matter. He's cooking, y'all. There is no way you can guard this man, bro. He's unguardable. (laughs) He's unguardable, bro. Unguardable is the perfect term to describe Jalen Brunson. Because I've literally watched teams try to do everything. They try to yeah, him. bro. They try putting size on them. They try to put somebody quicker on them. Smaller and quicker yeah. on them. They try yeah. to pick them up. They try to pick them up on 90 feet. They try to do all this other sh- everything. And he's still handing out work. And the crazy Word. part is watching him figure out the defense in real time. <laughs> Rouse was good for the family. What up, Rouse? What up, Rouse? Nick's Twitter has made it to the chat. You know what I mean? Um, facts. Facts. Appreciate you, Rouse. Everybody press the like button. That's a fact. Sharing is always Word. caring. You know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, the craziest thing is watching Jalen Brunson. It only, for some strange reason, it only works when and the, the lob is about <laughs> Yeah. But it, it was crazy is watching uh, Jalen Brunson, excuse me, uh, figure out the, the defense in real time. Like, I watched him. I, uh, he's passing the ball a lot. And then second half, you be like, oh, he goes for 20 in, a, in, in the third quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, 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 and it's even better watching everybody have to eat their words about Jalen Brunson. Watching the Jet have to eat his words. Watching uh, all these, these, these popular talk. Uh, J.J. Reddick was talking about how Jalen Brunson, he's like, he's being modest. He's trying to be like a modest. He's a, he's a top 10 or top 12 or top 15 guy in the league. Listen. Jalen Brunson is a top 10 player in the NBA. He's Word. fourth, fourth, fourth in scoring in the NBA. Fourth in top 13 in assists per game. High efficiency. 
His wing shares have to be absolutely through the fucking roof. I don't got the numbers on that, but I know from watching games, his wind shares is absolutely through the fucking roof. So what are we talking about when we talk about top 10 players? A lot of the guys they got in a top 10, they got off of nostalgia. KD is top 10 off of nostalgia. He's not that fucking guy anymore. Let it go. Wow. As as great as LeBron has been in, at his age, at his age, as great as he, LeBron has been super great for, for fucking 39 years old. This is, un, this is fucking alien type shit. And I'm not taking nothing away from that. But he's no longer top 10 in the NBA. Like, there's not too many people you could put above Jalen Brunson. So when I say Jalen Brunson is fucking top 10, I don't need no rebuttal. I need you, I need people to nod their head and say, yes, you are right, T Tom. Because a lot of the people you have in your top 10 is off nostalgia. Daniel Lillard, nostalgia, because he's been asked this season. Jalen hmm. Brunson is, is, is the future. He's a part of that future class. Anthony Edwards, Shea Gilders, Alexander, uh, uh, Luca, Joker. Like, Halliburton. Fuck Tyrese Halliburton. He's not <laughs> better than Jalen Brunson. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, 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 I get what you're saying, but you know, surprise, I can't fit the point this, at this time. Yo, listen. <laughs> Yo, well, Tyrese Halliburton has showed his colors after the All Star break. He's not who everybody really thought he was. They was yeah. giving him as like putting him at the as the same breath as as, as as SGA, and he's not that. You know what I mean? He's not that. You just look at where his, if he was that, his team wouldn't be in fucking the playing right now. Or oh, well, succeed fighting to Sit stay team. out of the playing. Right, yeah. uh, but Jalen Brunson, you got to remember too, right? I know I'm being super long winded. I'm sorry, guys. Y'all could cut me off whenever I want. It's the cognac, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but you got to also remember all the injuries that Jalen Brunson had to overcome to keep this team where they at. We're in the third seed, one game away from the second seed, and for a whole month and some change. We were missing four starters, <laughs> or three or four starters for a month and change. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying when I'm saying that he he's one of he's him he's one of the guys. You know what I mean? He's one of the the, the top ten. You know what I mean? And, and, and everybody else's nostalgia. You know what I mean? It's the facts. Maddie Smooth, I might have to agree with you. <laughs> Steph Curry. Top 10, I don't know. That's nostalgia. <laughs> That's nostalgia. No, nah, no, nah, I take that back. Steph Curry team is just ass. I'm just going to... The, the pieces that he got around him is just, is garbage. I watched uh, Steph but, Curry do... Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, Kev. I'm on the end of playing. I watched Steph Curry do everything he could to win some games and still lose because nobody else could help him. You know what I mean? So... Steph Curry might still be top ten. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna land a plane there, yeah, cat. But you would think that you would think that the way everybody discredit discredit the Knicks, our team is ass too, you know. And still Jalen Brunson, still Jalen Brunson got us at the third seed. The disrespect that we get as a as a team, you you would think that you know Jalen Brunson is not that guy. <laughs> like our team is ass, bro, because everybody thinks that, you know. So to yeah. to see Jalen Brunson doing what he's doing, um, shout out to Kendrick Perkins. He's like the only one that really believes in this Nick team. Um, it's 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 a shit. I, I he might he might be the best. He might be the best because like think about it. Like Shay Shay 
Shea Alexander, Shea Alexander. He got a he got a squad around him, bro. Let's be real. Let's be real. He's a yo, Jalen Williams is a monster, bro. He got a fucking squad around that man, bro. You know, like for the guys that's crazy. The way people talk about the Knicks, you would think that we don't got doors on our team, bro. But we fully healthy right now. And you love and y'all lucky Julius Randle's not playing. Because if Julius Randle's not playing, we running away with the East, bro. <laughs> if he's if he's playing, we run away with the East. Eyes closed, bro. In the in, in the words of the great dirty apartment having murder mook. Easy, <laughs> yo, no, bro, it's crazy. No, I agree. I, I, if 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 Julius Randle was here, we're going to the finals. Yeah, I mean, it's not a doubt in my mind, right? Yeah. Not a doubt in my mind that we're going to the finals if Julius Randle was here, right? Uh, but somebody said some shit. And I I I want to. I feel like it was a challenge. The Nez said it. Make a case for top five. Yo, bro, he top three, bro. Yo, he top three, bro. Yo, listen, and listen. not only that, not only that, the at the at the contract that the, the money that he's making with the numbers that he's putting up, bro, is in, so boom. <laughs> and I think so it's boom. more I think it's okay. more that he's a Knicks player. If he was a point yeah. guard anywhere else doing exactly oh, forget what he's it. doing for us, oh, forget it. he's forget top it. five easily. Forget it. He's a Nick. Forget it. No question. Yeah. So, so check it, right? No question. Jason Tatum. Uh, Joel Embiid. Uh, Joker. Joker. Uh, SGA. That's it. That's it. Anthony Anthony Edwards is debatable. You know what I mean? Ant Man is debatable. He it's flashier what Ant Man does, the highlight dunks and all that shit. It's flashier, but it's debatable who's the better player. And that's the four that I, I give you above Jalen Brunson. Other than that, everybody else, sorry. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm not doing it. It's debatable. You have to debate me for that, right? Those are the people. And, and people are like, oh, Giannis, you have to understand. The reason why I'm not giving Giannis, Jalen Brunson is averaging 37 points against the Bucks this season. <laughs> 37. <laughs> Fuck, I'm going to give it to Giannis for. Giannis, he's averaging 28 against the Knicks. They might have the series, but when we're talking about who was the best player on the court during that time when these teams played, it was clearly Jalen Brunson, the best player on the court. And just to go back to the Anthony Edwards being questionable, Anthony Edwards this season is averaging 25.9 points, 5.5 rebounds, 5.1 assists. Jalen Brunson is averaging 28.2 points. (laughs) 3.6 rebounds and 6.7 assists on 47.7% field goal shooting. I think that debate is a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a dub. Yo, you can pack that one saying. up. Pack it up. That's what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, babe. This is, like, listen. That's what I'm saying. When, 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 when people... When people still try to locate down players because, you know, a lot of these people don't want to really admit that they were wrong. So they're, like, slowly walking back their shit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, now he's top 20. He's top 15. Da, da, da. No, he's top five. He's and, top five. And let's just be clear. Anthony Edwards was a first-round number one pick. He's supposed to be making these numbers. Jalen Brunson was a second round, 33rd pick. <laughs> Need we say more? And, and cook it. Cook Man, we need to we need to get the we need to get the we need to get the drop the drop the bomb uh, <laughs> for the background, you know? Oh, say less. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's we need to do that. Here, you heard? Word. Wait, Word. You smell that rising? I smell something. I smell an incoming rent in tea time. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I almost <laughs> forgot. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Because if you're going to do the one I think you're going to do right now, you about to do a Stephen A. We're going to publicly trade his ass from a Knicks <laughs> fan. And we, we kindly take in Kendrick Perkins. We trade yeah, him for, for Perk. Word. Right. Word. Go ahead, T time. Is a tea time rent coming, guys? I got a smoke so, for this. So, so today, right? I'm sitting at the crib, minding my own damn business, right? I get on my social medias, you know what I mean? I get on Beyonce's internet, right? And I see a clip, uh, 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 somebody sent me, like, yo, I thought he was a Nick fan. And, and Stephen A. Smith is sitting there talking about, yeah, I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm seeing with Quentin Grimes. Ooh, wait, ooh, what? <laughs> <laughs> talking about the Detroit Pistons, because even if you're talking about the Detroit Pistons, Quentin Grimes ain't playing there neither. <laughs> he hurt. <laughs> How can you call yourself a Nick fan? How can you sit there and be on TV? I heard you blue sky. I heard you blue sky. <laughs> but you don't even know who's on the fucking roster. This is I the most him. disgusting shit I've ever seen in my life. It's the most embarrassing. You're on national fucking television. Even though most Nick fans don't claim you as a Nick fan. Nationally, People believe you're a Nick fan. So whether we like it or not, you represent us. Even though most Nick fans disowned you years ago. He does not represent the people here on Nixon Ish. He does not first represent all, us. First of all, he does not represent know, us. Shout out, shout out to my, my, my people on Nick's Twitter. Nick's Twitter been disowned him. Uh, many many moons ago, right? Many moons ago. You know what I mean? Uh, and for you to be on national TV and the producer have to tell you he got he was traded. And then you be like, oh, <laughs> I, knew, I knew he was traded. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh-huh. You didn't. This is the same guy when we was losing the who by 21. Miami. We he was in the garden. After boy, boycott in the garden for 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 a year, uh, year or two, finally comes back to the garden. <clears throat> we start losing to the Miami Heat by twenty one. This freaking scrub decides that he was going to leave, and we had one of the greatest comebacks you would ever want to see. You are disgrace. Stop. Getting on TV talking about orange blue skies, my Knicks, my Knicks. You don't even know who's on that team, gang. Kendrick Yo. Perkins is making you look stupid with his Kendrick Perkins is as country as he ever wanted to be. Country as country could get. I'm talking about chitlin eating kind of country, right? <laughs> Yo. And he is looking like more of a Nick fan than you, a person that's supposed to be a New York native. It's disgusting. And the rent your head kept. So Yo, you that. forgot, you forgot, you forgot that he called Isaiah Hartenstein a reserve. Oh, he called him a reserve. <laughs> oh, hold on, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Listen, now I gotta deal with some guy named Hartenstein. That's what I'm saying. This guy, he, he embarrasses me as a New Yorker, dog. And like, yeah. you know, the rest of the country already hate us. Yeah, you know I mean, the rest of the country already hate us, New Yorkers. This is a fact. Yeah, you know I mean, we already, as Nick fans, we already been laughing stocks for how, however long. Now that we're actually good, right? 
now that we actually have something to be proud of, you got this freaking bozo on, on. I'm sorry, I don't like to call people bozos, right? He is. This, this, this is I don't like because I don't like yeah. when people call me bozos for my takes either. Yeah, you know I mean, I I get super offended by that, so I'm not gonna do that to him. Ah, this this guy is on fucking national TV, making us look silly, making us look silly. Cause like I said. Even though Knicks fans don't claim him, national the people around the country know him as a representation of for Knicks fans because he get up there and he he flip flopping, he be flip all flip flopping, like he all flip flopping, like something go wrong, he's up there, oh oh oh, oh these, these guys are so bad, the yeah. front office, I can't stand them. And then as soon as we go and do some good, my Knicks, he wanna rip. Oh, oh, oh. We need to no, bring back Max Kellerman. No, <laughs> bro. Now, fuck Max Kellerman. Because he's he been left. He went to LA a long time ago. Fuck Max Kellerman. Every minute it was changing the Donovan Mitchell. Is. Bro. Like, come on, man. Kendrick Perkins got that fan pass, dude. Man. You out of here. Even, he, even after we kicked Donovan Mitchell ass in the playoffs, he was still asking for Donovan Mitchell, which is weird. Like, why? Why would you ask for somebody who asked we already kicked? Like, <laughs> Jalen Brunson has clearly shown you on multiple occasions, regular season, postseason, regular multiple oh, no, seasons. Me. Hold on, hold on. Excuse me. Let me postseason, regular season, reg oh. Oh, postseason, regular season, and then if we play them again, he's gonna show you again in the postseason. That he's clearly the better player, but let let somebody mention Donovan Mitchell to the New York Knicks. Oh, 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 oh my God! Oh my God! Ooh. Like, come on, bro! It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. It's embarrassing. And end the rant. End the rant. Uh, Cause, boy, <laughs> it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Shout out to Kendrick Perkins, man, for keeping it a buck amongst all the motherfucking haters over at ESPN. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because I almost forgot about this. I almost forgot about this. We going right back. Right back. <laughs> to kill O'Neal, you big behemoth. What was that? That was my effect. <laughs> oh, yo, stop fighting. Stop fighting. Do it again! Do it again! Do it again! Shot fire! Shaquille oh, O'Neal. That's fire. That, that was fire. Shot fire. You big behemoth. You really opened your freaking mouth and said that if we played the Orlando Magic, it was going to sweep us? Oh yeah, that's crazy. That's somebody, crazy. Somebody pull up Pablo Benchero's numbers, y'all. Somebody do it. Somebody do it because again, he is twenty-two point six point six point eight rebounds, five point three this three assists. Last number. And and y'all y'all goofies over at TNT and ESPN. No, it was TNT because it was Kenny the Jet Smith. Y'all sat there while Kenny the Goop. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to say that word because again, y'all sat up there while Kenny the No Jet left in his Jet Smith, not knees, <laughs> not knees. Uh, uh, sat up there and said that we don't have a player better than Pablo Banchero, and clearly Jalen Brunson is smoking Pablo Banchero's boots. In a, in a one on one matchup, right? And it, it, again, they they beat us before the trade, and they beat us while we was <coughs> injured, right? <coughs> um, and for Shaq to sit there and be like, "Yeah, we're gonna get swept by these guys," are you on drugs? Are you on drugs? First of all, these guys ain't really these guys ain't got no 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 playoff experience, none, zero, zip. Zip. 
Joe Ingles is the only one with playoff experience. He old as dirt. He only Word. one. Only Word. no playoff experience. Pablo ain't built for that yet. Y'all got too much faith in Pablo yet. I think Pablo in three, four years is going to be something super crazy. Right? But as he is right now, he's not built for the pressure that we going to put on these guys. Pause. Then we pack them up and their coach was like, yeah, this is what the pressure is going to look like in the postseason. This yep. is what the per We packed them up. Hey, this is what it's going to look like in the postseason. Because they wasn't ready for that kind of intensity. And they're not going to be ready for that kind of intensity. You know what I mean? When, when, when the pressure is on every last single shot that you take, and you know every game is getting more and more crucial. You know who's ready for that kind of shit? Jalen Brunson, because he's been there before. You know who's ready for that shit? Josh Hart, because in college he's been there before. Same thing with Dante DiVincenzo. If I'm not mistaken, he was the MVP in a second champion, or first or second championship. I can't remember which one. He took over no. that game. He took over that game. But for Shaq, big, goofy, but I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. You big, overgrown, club foot having. For you to sit there, it's hate. It has to be nothing but hate. It has to be nothing but hate. To say, I don't even care if you said that they will win because that's your opinion. But for you to say they're going to sweep us, that's disrespectful. <laughs> disrespectful. And Durant, if you're in the building, make sure you press that like button. It's very important. Sharing is always caring. You know what I mean? And that's the Sharing. thing with like a lot of the teams that we're going to see early on in the playoffs, like you said. These teams haven't seen us at full force. They, they haven't seen this team that we're coming into the playoffs with. So they either seen us shorthanded because of a trade, right? Like the Pacers, they caught us like as trades were happening. The Magic have seen us depleted from injuries. So no one has seen us with OG and Mitch back together. You know what I'm saying? So they don't know what's about to happen to them. If they thought we played physical without those two, they don't know what's about to come for them in a series. Because the same way they can adjust defensively for us, we can adjust to them too. And I think our adjusting to them is going to be a whole lot easier than their adjusting to us. Because not only are we a great defensive team, any given night someone different goes off. We don't have one consistent goal of play except Brunson. It may be it may be Dante tonight, might be Josh, might be Deuce. They never gonna be ready for us. And and, and, and this is what's the crazy part too. When you start looking at Bogey, then you be like, that's an option. And he showed that yeah. he could get hot in a yeah. small window of time. Like, oh, yeah, we're gonna give Bogey 18 minutes. But he can give you 15 points in that 18 minutes. That's important, bro. <laughs> That's important. Thanks. And, 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 and it buys just enough time for Jalen Brunson to get his, his breather on. You know what I mean? That's the most important part. Because we know in the postseason, Jalen Brunson is going to be playing 40, almost 40 minutes every game. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. the more that the, 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 the more that we can have Jalen Brunson on the bench because Bogey is going off. It's, it's super helpful. You know what I mean? Super helpful. I already said, as long as Bogey is taking uh, 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 less than four dribbles, we're going to be all right. If he's being aggressive and taking a shot or passing the ball on less than four dribbles, we're going to be all right. And he's been doing that. And if you keep on doing that, like Mrs. Nick said, it's so many weapons on this team. We can adjust. We can do so many different things. Like, even when we talk about the center position, we talk about, uh, you know, uh, wanting Hartenstein to guard Przingis. But now if you have a more bruising of a center, you still have Mitch, who's long pause, 
and 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 and, and is great at defense, right? Like we can make it difficult for somebody like Joel and B with both of them. Yeah, you know I mean, because you know, and you could give them different looks. Because if Joel and B try to get comfortable taking mid range and three point shots, we could put Hartenstein on them. If he's going to try to play a bruising brand of basketball, we could put uh, Mitch on him. Yeah, you know I mean, not saying that we're going to shut him out, but Contain just to throw him. those, just to throw those different kind of looks at him, is important. Yeah, you know I mean, like as long as we can keep him from having a forty or fifty point game, that's what we're looking for, right? We 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 want we know Joel and B his average is like thirty points, and, and, and what Clyde always said, like. When it comes to guard and star players, what you want to do is keep them around their season average, right? You don't want to have them going for 40 or 50. That's what you don't want. And I feel like we have the capability to keep somebody at the center position like Joel Embiid at his season average, 28 to 30 points per game, right? And that's because we could throw so many looks at him. And we could also go small ball because even though I'm not really – particularly excited about Preston Chua's play right now. If somebody tried to play a small ball against us and have a small ball five, Preston Chua is more than capable of handling those duties, right? And when you look at the other positions, four through, through one, we have a multitude of interchangeable pieces. I don't even need to go down the list. Y'all know all the pieces that we have to, 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 to be interchangeable one one through four. You know what I mean? And Again, all play defense. And all facts. play defense. Facts. Again, I'm on state. Uh, if you want to build, make sure you press that like button. And sharing is always caring. You heard? Uh, right. So <clears throat> I'm about to wind down. I ain't going to lie to y'all. You know what I mean? But we do got some games coming up. We play the Boston Celtics on Thursday. How y'all feeling about that matchup? They just lost to the Bucks tonight, which I was highly disappointed about. Um, I, I feel like every time I feel like every time we 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 play Boston, we always miss a key player. We we I don't think we faced them like full strength. Um, I think the first few times that we played them. I'm sorry, Kev. 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 What's that? I'm sorry, Kev. I'm sorry, Kev. <laughs> this is something that when it happened, I was like, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have to talk about this because Denez, thank you. Thank you, good brother. Thank you. Because this is supposed to be one of the rants tonight. And it, it was supposed to be a big rant. I'm not even going to press the button because it was supposed to be a big rant. But how in the whole entire hell you're down by 10 points? You're down 10. 10 of them things, you're down. You get a steal, and you think the prudent thing to do in a game that you need. We don't just need this game. We, we don't just need this game. The Knicks didn't just need this game. The Chicago Bulls very much needed this game as well, right? But in, in, you're down by 10 points. You think the prudent thing to do is to throw yourself an alley-oop off the backboard like you're that guy. First of <laughs> all, you're not that guy. You're not Ant <laughs> Edwards. You're not Jason Tatum. You're not, you're, you're not Shea Gilgis Alexander. Like, you're not Paul George. You're not Kawhi Leonard. You're not LeBron James. Like, I, you're not Jalen Brown. Like, uh, should I keep on going? Uh, uh, people who have this kind of authority to do these kind of... You're not Jalen Green? Like, uh, uh, you're not De'Aaron Fox? Like, uh, uh, like, the list goes on of all the people that you are not. You're not Zion Williamson. You're not Ingram. Like, uh, uh, you're not Anthony Edwards. Like, uh, 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 the list goes on of the people that you are not. To feel the need that you had the authority, the green light from the coaching staff to go, hey, 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 I'm going, 
hey, guess what? I'm going to throw this shit off the backboard and I'm going to yam this shit. <laughs> you're not that person. And you're down by 10. I can see if you were up 20. Right? I can see if you was up 20. You know what I mean? You're down by 10 in a game that you need to secure home court in, in, in the playing. You're playing team trying to secure home court in the playing. And you think you think it's the prudent thing to do to throw a, a self alley oop, and I'm so happy that it fell. Who I was so giddy. I mean, listen, like a kid, I kicked my feet up in the air like this. <laughs> That's what I did. That's how I did. I kicked my feet up in the air. Like, oh. I did that. That's how I was laughing. <laughs> That's how I was laughing when it failed because it should have. And in turn, I want you to know that you're partially responsible. Why? Uh, 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 uh what's the, the, the guy named the, the center, the center that got hurt? Uh, Drummond. Andre Drummond, why he got hurt? You're partially because in that sequence, that's when Drummond got hurt. Tory Craig did that. Because you tried to, uh, uh, what, 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 in the words of the, the, the great macho man, with all your, your grandstanding and hot dog, and yeah, that's, 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 you got the, okay. you got him hurt, you got him hurt, you know what I mean? And I'm just gonna leave it there, my bad, Kev. I'm sorry, I was long with it, I wasn't supposed to be that long with it, but nah, that shit bothered me, good brother. But yeah, back to the, the Celtics. I'm sorry. Um, um, no, nah, I was just saying that I don't think they seen us fully, 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 uh, uh, uh fully healthy yet. So, so I think maybe I, I wish I wish Drew was able to play. Um, but but, um, I'm curious to see how they how how we played them this time around. Uh, now that Mitch and OG is back. And um and and with the kind of momentum that we're playing with, I, w- I would like to. This is this would be a nice test going into the playoffs, in my opinion. Absolutely, uh, because Frax is, is is fading on us fast. Frax, how you feel about this game about Boston coming up? Well, honestly, it's like it's been said already. They haven't really played us with this combination of players yet. I think they're going to be somewhat of a against Boston where Mitch should be able to some, Mitch should be able to somewhat neutralize um, Porzingis. Um, I'm just hoping we can contain Al Horford coming off the bench because mm. he really kills us in terms of hitting the three pointers and grabbing rebounds and, you know, coming off, filling in for Porzingis when Porzingis is getting left. So that's going to be a key to beating Boston. But, again, we can play with them, and if we play our cards right against them, we can beat them. Absolutely. Mrs. Nix. I mean, any team is beatable on any given night, right? Um, One, we don't know if Boston's going to even play all their guys because they really have nothing to play for at this point. Um, but either way, I think we should come out prepared. We should come out ready to win because we have something to win for. We have something to play for. Um, and like I'm like like Fred says, we ten toes down. We we want these fifty wins. So whatever it takes, let's Bye. let's make it happen. Let's let's get to the playoffs healthy. Um, and whether we win or not, I'm good. I'm good with it. We we. We, we deserve to be where we are. Um, losing to Boston doesn't make us less of a better team. You know what I mean? We're still Tracks. a great team. Um, but, I mean, I want to stay in the third place for sure. Um, for so sure, whatever we sure. got to – yeah, whatever we got to do to to maintain that spot. Um, but I think it's going to be a playoff intense game. I think – this is going to show – I mean, we know what this team is about. We know they're gritty and tough and all that, and I, I, I expect to see that against Boston. 
Yeah. Uh, my little two cents against Boston is, uh, well, we we see that they rested. Of course, they rested. Uh, Al Horford and Brazingis against the the Bucks, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna play against the Knicks, right? Uh, well, I was just about to, I was just about to take you off my screen. Your eyes was all the way closed. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, yo, bad, um, bad, yo. Yeah. yo, yo, Fraz, because I'm about, I'm about to wrap up anyway, good brother. I appreciate you for pulling up. Go to bed, homie. You know what I mean? I appreciate you for holding out. Because I'm after I say this, it's kaput. You know what I mean? You hear me? Yeah. I, I appreciate you for pulling up, good brother. We'll be here. I hope to see you Thursday, you heard? I will be. Here. I got you. Yeah. Peace. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like I said, they rested uh, Holford and Przingis against us. Uh, you know how it is. Whenever people play the Knicks, everybody's healthy. Everybody's ready to play against the New York Knicks. So I'm expecting them to come into that game fully healthy. And you know, like like uh, Frank Phil. Finger said, pause, that shit is crazy. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be our real test. You know what I mean? This is going to be our real test because they're going to be playing to, to kind of prove a point. I, I, like, as much as, you know, most teams, most of the, 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 the sports talk heads don't want to give us our credits. You know, teams are really looking at the Knicks as a problem for real. If you listen to the coaches talk, the coaches are talking like the Knicks are a problem for real. You know what I mean? So I'm pretty sure Joe Mazzula punk ass because he ain't, he knows his team going to get kicked. He's not a good coach. <laughs> He's not a good coach. And to be perfectly honest, I think if they play all their players, I'm going to need Coach Tommy T to coach the hell out that game, right? I'm going to need him to coach the hell out of the game. I need adjustments. I'm going to need him to make sure that uh, uh, Jalen Brunson is always in positions to score. You know what I mean? I'm going to make sure that he keeps guys rotating and moving and cutting to the basket and us getting open shots. And I'm going to need him to keep on doing what he's been doing, is making timely timeouts, calling timely timeouts. I think that, excuse me, Coach Tommy T timeout calling over the last two months, it's been perfect. Perfect. <laughs> teams go on a – it'd be sometimes teams go on a, a 6-0 run. He'd be like, time out. Time out. He, he did it today. <laughs> be time, it, it, it ranged between 10 and, and 6. It, time out. And he get guys right, and we get right back to what we've been doing. You feel me? And, and I think – that game not so much relies on the talent. I think it relies on the coaching. You know what I mean? Because our guys is going to be ready to play. They, they, oh, they, they've been juiced up to play. They've been playing with all their heart and intensity. I just think Coach Tommy T has to put the game plan uh, intact for guys to win. You know what I mean? And I think he's been doing that for the most part. Sometimes we come out the lethargic. Tonight we seem we seem to have remedied that. If, and, and I told Mrs. Nick the last live, I said, "Yo, if we in, if we in, a, if we ten, if we down ten points going into fourth quarter, we gonna win." And that's how I feel about everybody. Ten um, points going uh, into fourth, we gonna win. But guys, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yo, I I think that like I said a few episodes ago, you know. He he definitely he definitely got to be looked at for coach of the year again this year. I think oh, so. Oh, he's not gonna get it. I think <laughs> he Joe should. Mazzula. I think Joe Mazzula got sixty wins. God, yeah, you know I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah, but 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 if you see if you see what happened to to this next team, you know, losing the players that we lost and still being able to be where we, where we're at, um. I think I think that's something to be looked at. Yeah, yo, okay. Yo, I'm not going to disagree with you, gang. I'm not disagreeing with you. I I I personally feel 
that Coach Tommy T should definitely get his third coach of the year. But I just know what the numbers is saying. That is Joe Mazzula. And Joe Mazzula is a shit coach. I just think he has a conglomerate of talent that makes him look better than what he really is. You feel me? Um, It's like Steve Kerr and the, the Nets. You know what I mean? Like, Steve Kerr looked like a really good coach because he had all the talent. You take away that talent, you see how shitty of a coach he is. I feel the same way about Joe Mazzula. Joe Mazzula defensive schemes is trash. He just has really good defensive players. He has Drew Holiday to man the perimeter defense. He has Brazilians to back up the Drew Holiday's perimeter defense. Uh, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum ain't shitty defenders. Yeah, you know I mean, like they're above average defenders. So it makes that team look better defensively. Like it's the scheme when it's just really natural talent that's holding that defensive scheme afloat. I watched them play basketball and I watched the way they defend. Defensively, their schemes are ass. You know what I mean? And their players are saving their lives. You feel me? Uh, when you look at the Knicks, I feel like we have solid defensive players, and it's the scheme that's making the defensive players look better, right? Uh, the way that we force guys into help, the way that the help is always ready <clears throat> to help. You know what I mean? The way that guys are, are, are know when to recover, the way the rotations are rotating. It That is practice, and that is schemed out. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't feel that's the same thing that's happening over in Boston. And I agree with you. Joe Mazzula should probably not win coach of the year, but he's probably going to because it's hard to argue 60 wins. It's hard, it's, to, argue. It's, it's, it's hard to argue 60 wins, but when you got a guy like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, uh, Chris that Porzingis, um, and you got all these players on a team compared to a Nick team who 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 is literally like was torn apart at one point where we could have fell out of the playoffs and this coach kept this team together and kept us afloat to a third seed. I mean that that to me kind of like to me personally, in my opinion, it, it kind of outweighs everything the okay. the, the Celtics. We we literally say the same thing, but we place in different you know, right. value. I'm not I'm not saying I'm placing I'm not saying value. I'm not saying you I'm not saying you no. per se are saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just I'm, saying I'm that just going, that what I know what the NBA voters is going to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what they're going to do. Whoever vote for this, they're gonna look at the win total and they're gonna put all their stock in a win total. You know what I mean? Right. right. And, and which they shouldn't because Joe Mazzula is an ass coach. He's bad. He's going to win coach of the year and he's going to get exposed in the playoffs. You know what I mean? He's going to get exposed in the playoffs. To me, Joe Mazzula is the same as Jack Vaughn. You know what I mean? It's the same shit. It's just that he just was blessed with a situation. He inherited a situation that was advantageous. What? You know what I mean? Because what, what what's the cheater name? The, the scrub that cheated uh, on. He made Yeah, Adoku. yeah. The scrub that cheated on 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 the beautiful me along, right? That scrub. <laughs> he built that shit. <laughs> he built that shit. Joe Mazzula is running with the same shit that Ime Adoka built, but he don't know how to run the ship as well he just inherited better talent he just got more assets you know what i mean so yeah i agree kev maybe coach tommy t does deserve coach of the year but i don't see him getting it because of the 60 wins dog i just don't yeah you know I, I, mean? I, I just don't yeah you know i mean not I, saying I, you're wrong nah, you, know nah, I mean? I you you right in my opinion <laughs> How you feel, well, Miss Nix? How you feel about that? I mean, I agree. I think they're gonna go by 
the wins. I mean, we know that Coach Tommy T is coach of the year, without a doubt. I mean, but again, you look at it, he's a Knicks coach. To me, anytime you include Knicks as part of it, they not give it to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know what? I don't care. Because as long as we get to a championship, they can't take that shit from us. Mm-hmm. Nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. So, last question, then we out of here. Because literally the playoffs is around the corner. Uh, I'm going to start with Mrs. Knicks. How far in the playoffs would you consider this to be a successful season? <laughs> um, successful. I think it's already a successful season. Yeah. I mean, there's no taking away through all the trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. This already, if we don't get past the first round, it's a successful season. However, I definitely expect this in the conference finals. Absolutely. Mm. Especially if we second and third seed, we go into the conference finals. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 could, I could pretty much I could pretty much second that. You know, I feel like I feel like if we if we if we um um peak at the right time, which it looks like you know, and um, I think teams are going to worry about I think teams are going to have trouble playing us, bro. Especially if OG starts knocking down them three-point shots. You got Mitch um, Mitch looking better as time goes by. I think I think we can make some noise in the playoffs. Um, I wouldn't mind Easter Conference Finals uh, um, if, if we can make it to the finals even better. <laughs> but I would say Easter Conference Finals, too. Yeah. And if Troll you look guard. at it, let me let me just go back one second. If you Hold look on. at Tro Guard in the building, I see you. What Troll up, guard. BJ? About... What's good, bro? We about to get out of here very soon, good brother. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. But <laughs> we about to get out of here very soon. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Mrs. Nick. No, and when you look at like how the season played out this season, even with injuries, we didn't lose a lot of games back to back. So when you think of a playoff series, and you having to beat us four games mm. out of seven, that's going to mm. be tough because we ain't lose a lot of games back to back. We might have lost two here, one, two, or yeah. one, three, yeah. lost three here, but we ain't lose like that. So y'all going to have y'all problems. Y'all better be ready. I'm warning y'all. Well, you, know, you know what's crazy? I don't think since the trade we lost four games back to back. Yo, I was about to say that. I don't think we lost four or five games in a row this year at all throughout the that whole is. season. I, I was trying to be modest. I, I was saying the same thing, but I'm not sure in the beginning of the season if we didn't lose four games in a row. But I know for a fact since the, the trade, we haven't lost four games in a row. Uh, me personally – I think it's a failure if we don't make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, especially if we in the third seed. Uh, that's just how I feel and how confident I am in this team. Uh, I still feel like, you know, if we got Julius, we going finals, finals or bust for me. You know what I mean? For me. I know that was, it wouldn't be a popular opinion, and I will argue anybody who said that it would be a bust if we didn't make the finals if we had Julius Randle. I'd be like, oh, I know it's not, but in my eyes, because I know how talented this team is, it would have been finals or bust if we had Julius Randle. Now, to me, without Julius Randle, especially when we're in the third seed, making an Eastern Conference Finals is a successful wow. season for me. What well, happened? We we never lost four games in a row this year. Yeah, I was just looking. We only lost three in a row in, de- in December. In yeah. December, we lost three in a row to the Thunder, the Magic, and the Pacers. That's and it. Then, and that's it, right? And 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 in February, and in February, we lost. Actually, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. In February, we lost four in a row. One, two, three, four. In February, we lost. Okay. From uh, we lost to Dallas, Indiana, 
Houston, Orlando. That was the miss. Yeah, of, that was that, that was the that only was the time. Trade, that, that was the, the only time. Trade when we played Orlando, right? Right. No, that was right. that was injury. February was injury. Okay. February was injury. Yeah, February. Yeah. Was injury. So, I mean, like that makes yeah. sense. That but makes that's sense. it. But yeah. everything else was like one loss, two loss. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yep, yep, three, yep. Three at max, and that was three this at recent max. stretch. And that was right. that re this recent stretch. Um, you know, that's a fact, BJ. Houston did cheat us. That's a fact. Yeah, sure. that was, that was, well, not Houston, the refs. The refs. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, it got, it, to me, it's definitely Eastern Conference Finals or bust to me. When it comes to what's a successful season, um, I think we have the tools. I think we have the tools to to be that good. I, 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 I always say I don't fear nobody underneath Boston. Maybe the Sixers healthy. The Sixers got healthy at the right time to be at the position they are. I hope for whatever reason they make it to a space where they have to play the Bucks. <laughs> no, the Bucks is going to be <laughs> in, in. I'll take that back. You no, know, the Bucks is in second. Yeah, if, if the, the the Sixers could make it to six seed and play the Bucks first round, that'll be beautiful for me, right? That'll be beautiful to me. I don't know if they can. You no, know, yeah, the 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 Pacers ain't lock up the playoff spot yet. So yeah, the Sixers can still make it to the 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 six seed. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, so and there's no saying what's gonna happen with the Bucks <laughs> because Giannis got hurt today, pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't even talk about that, and we not because I'm trying to get up out of here. <laughs> Wait, what? 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 What, what you said? Uh, Giannis getting hurt today. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. No, oh, contact. yeah no, no contact. Yep. Oh, ooh, like, well, that's not good. He was running up the court, and he just went down and started grabbing his calf. Oh, uh, that's not good. That's not good. But when oh, I looked that? at it. Uh. He had to get helped off the, 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 the court, but it wasn't like one of those things where he was like, ah, ah. It was like he just fell down and was just like grabbing it like. Maybe ah. like a cramp. Maybe like a cramp. I he don't know. He didn't get MRIs, man. Yeah. Oh, like, that's not good. And, you know, when you when you got a cramp, there's no MRIs being done because you know what a cramp feels like. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, that's the truth. The fact that he had to get. Emma Rise is kind of like, you know, I mean, I, I wish the best for for, for Giannis. No, for you know, sure. But I, my point of, of saying that is that that second seed is up for grabs. No, absolutely. Facts. Absolute facts. That's we, what's we, important we right there. We, we, That's what we need. Out. That's what we need, but, man. You know, I got to keep it a buck and, and like, yeah, I mean, get the, the, the political shit out the way. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> we don't wish no injury. On nobody, on nobody. Sure everybody's no. healthy. Right. But right. the fact that they injured definitely swings the door wide open for the second seed. Uh, but that also could lead us to playing to the Sixers in the, the first round, which is something I don't want to do. I think we could beat them, but I don't want to play them in the first fucking round. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, so like it just, it just, it's just weird. Right, it's just weird. Uh, but yeah, I'm about to get out of here, man. I, I said this a few times. Unless the the the, the next ish staff have anything else left to add, you know what I mean? Nah, let's beat them Celtics. Celtics. Let's <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, bro, uh, the the ride to fifty to fifty wins. Yes, it is. We it. gotta win out. Let's get it. We, uh, we gotta win it. out, and and yeah. and this is this is the first. This is the first step to winning out. I feel like if we beat the, the Celtics, we're going to win out. You know what I mean? That's right. Because there's no way in the world the Brooklyn Nets going to beat us. <laughs> Hell, no. Hell no. Not, not on our worst day. <laughs> Yo, y'all don't leave. I'm ending the live right now. Shout out to everybody if you didn't do it already. Make there okay, go, go. Make, if you didn't do it already, make sure you, you press that like button and share this, Karen. Uh, we wow. See on, we see y'all on, whatchamacallit, 